pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. I'm going to open a box of books. Just in case anybody asks, this is not an unboxing. Unboxings are so pretentious, I cannot bring myself to watch one. Just the idea makes me sick. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm just opening a box of books. Okay, so that's not pretentious. Okay, you heard it here first. <laughs> So I recently moved into my new apartment. I need bookshelves. I can't really unpack books, but even so I thought it might be a fun video just to open a box of books. I don't know. I packed this box maybe two or three weeks ago. I can't remember, obviously, what's in it. So I'm gonna open it and talk about the books. Let's see how it goes. Oh. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. I talked about this on a Friday Reads a year ago, or many, many months ago. When I first moved to Japan, I had the bright idea to design a course which I would teach in my own home on swearing in English, because it's quite mystifying for somebody from another language, especially, you know, an Asian language, the, the idea of swearing and how they swear, you know, using religious words and sexual words and stuff. So I spent about $500 buying a whole bunch of books on swearing. And I never did do the course because it's far above the level of anybody that I've ever encountered in Japan. And they, they just couldn't really be taught other than, you know, a little five minute explanation. So I've got all these books. Why We Curse, A Neuropsychosocial Theory of Speech by Dr. Timothy J. Never, never cracked it. This one I will keep and read the F word by Jesse, Jesse Shadelower, and it is basically a, a, a dictionary, another Trump headline, Jesus Christ, that's a good time to be talking about fuck, it's a dictionary of every, so fuck machine, fuck me, fuck load, fucker, frick, frig, I fuck, Face fuck. Yeah, yeah, butt fucker. Okay, yep. Yeah. It's, you know, you know, this could well be my memoirs. <laughs> Body language. Lawrence Peros. Everything you always wanted to do but were afraid to say. Playing with oneself. Oats and seed. The three F's in the 19th century. Fuck, fun, and a foot race. A meaningful quickie. Penis prick cock. Flip the bird. Here's one I didn't know. Warming the old man's supper. There was a time, this is 18th century, there was a time when after a hard day's work, the man of the house would come home to find his wife with skirt raised before the fireplace. And it was known as warming the old man's supper. Why does it have to be a wife? An encyclopedia of swearing by Jeffrey Hughes. Lord. The term is unusual in that its religious significance is not original but a metaphorical extension of the Anglo-Saxon secular status term Hlaford, H-L-A-F-O-R-D. That's interesting. Flighting, F-L-Y-T-I-N-G. This unfamiliar term denotes a swearing match or competition in insult, a form with a long tradition being found in Old Norse and Anglo-Saxon literature. Fuck that! Swearing, A Social History of Foul Language, Oaths, and Profanity in English by Jeffrey Hughes. Depraved and Insulting English by Peter Novobatsky and Amon Shea. Kagamosis, An Unhappy or Unpleasant Marriage. Oh, and my favorite w word in English, and I've talked about it before. Can you see it? I don't know if the... 
Calipedian, having nicely shaped buttocks, comes from the Greek word callus, meaning beautiful, and pidge, meaning buttocks. English doesn't get much better than that. Sias oh, Olagnia. Sias Olagnia, the lust for pregnant women. And the last one is not swearing related. This is actually a teacher's book or that I've used in my teaching. Fowler's Dictionary of Modern English Usage. All right, so that's the box. This actually, I think I will, it wasn't the kind of books I was expecting, so I still I think I'm going to do another one. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting all those books to be on one topic, so I'm kind of in the mood. I'm going to do one more, one more small box of books and add it to this video. Lydia Cassett, Reading the Morning Paper by Harriet Scott Chessman. I picked this up in Saskatchewan on a visit home. I liked the deckled edges. I know that's like a, that's a controversial topic. I love deckled edges and French flaps. Set in 19th century Paris and the relationship between the Impressionist painter Mary Cassatt and her sister Lydia, who was her fragile beloved muse. Anybody read it? I'll give it a try. It's short. Less than just over 150 pages. Moonstone by Sean, uh, Icelandic novel. I, it started out, the first 10 pages really grabbed me, and then by, I forget how many pages I ended up reading, 50, 40 pages, I just started really hating the writing, and the, uh, just, it just made me sick. So I had kind of a severe reaction, negative reaction, which... The kind that made me think, you know, maybe you were just having a bad day, so I will give it another try, but no, I just ended up hating it. This is a wonderful, important little Canadian memoir, The Education of Augie Morasti, a residential school memoir by Augie Morasti, Joseph August Morasti. And it was uh, ghostwritten or with assistance from one of my old English professors in Saskatoon, David Carpenter. It's his memoir about, uh, he's, he's since died, I believe, and he was about 90 when he died. But So as a boy, going to the residential schools, which was Canada's version of what of the atrocity that Trump uh, is, has perpetrated on the immigrants. The Canadian government snatched the indigenous children from their families and put them in schools where the Catholic nuns and priests beat and fucked them and tried to beat the Indian out of them. It's, it's as disgusting as any other racist thing that any other country has done. Canada's shame, and this is his memoir. And I read it, it was powerful. This is my, one of my unread Deborah Levies. I believe Curtis of Curtis Books and Books recently read it, or had started it. I want to read it. This is one of my favorite uh, Japanese novels, The Hunting Gun by Yasashi Inoue. It's another short little one. It's just, the, the, it's a perfect story about a love triangle and the structure. I don't usually comment on structure. I usually only think about structure when I'm something's not working for me. But this is one of the occasions where I could really appreciate that the structure was absolutely perfect. It's a series of letters back and forth and the way that each is nested in the story, it's absolutely taut. And you can just feel the parts of his novel vibrating against each other in a way that, that just blew me away. The Hunting Gun. I love this. I don't like reading memoirs, and I usually have bad luck with books about books, but here is a fabulous exception to the rule. The bookstore that floated, the bookshop that floated away by Sarah Henshaw. This young woman had no business sense and had no business doing what she did, but she bought a houseboat, filled it with books, and and went all over the UK, parking in this town and that town, selling books. And this is her memoir, and she she could hardly keep her business afloat, excuse the pun. She was always running out of money and staying with friends and whatnot, and she's a gorgeous writer, humor and emotionally compelling, and I love the way she writes about books and authors in here. This was really entertaining. 
Last I heard, she took her little book shop across the English Channel and was in France. So she's amazing. This was one of my favorite books as a kid, The Enchanted Woods by Enid Blyton. And I picked it up in Tokyo, thought I might reread it. But every time I reread books that I loved as a kid, it doesn't go well. So I'm kind of scared to try because I'm, I'm sure the writing is just awful. But it sure fired my imagination as a kid. This is a Slovenian novel. It's the first part of a series. A newcomers by... Loj Skavakic. Loj Skavakic. Didn't, didn't uh, practice the pronunciation. I started it. The writing was beautiful, but it was such a slow burn. I, w I got 100 pages in and nothing had happened yet. <laughs> I just stopped, but I, I am going to try it again. This is one that uh, of my bales from about two years ago this will be one of the first ones i pick back up because the the writing was gorgeous it's translated by michael biggins it's an archipelago books book it's an autobiographical novel so it's set in 1938 and it's the family they you know, the nazis are taking over the continent the mother is german husband's ethnic slovenian they were living in switzerland and they are told by the Swiss government to get out. I don't know why. I can't remember. I read it. but And it's the story through the eyes of the 10-year-old son. And they go back to the father's Slovenia, which was part of Yugoslavia. I should give it another try. Has anybody read it? Ali Smith's How to Be Both. The half of this novel that was about the teenage girl whose mother died was a five-star read for me. And the other half I hated by the end. So I was quite disappointed, and it's kind of made me shy about Ali Smith. I loved Autumn, and then I read this next, and a very mixed reaction, and I hesitate to pick anything else up, but of course I will, because I loved Autumn, and I loved the other half, so that's two-thirds positive, but I'm just kind of shy about trying it. This was the first Yan Liang novel I read, Mero, a little novella in the China Specials Penguin series. And I've talked about it before, but it's about a uh, woman whose husband commits suicide, but he continues to be in the story as a ghost. There's a ghost that I didn't mind, because it's just such a wacky writing style he has. And all of the, her children are mentally disabled, and she does not give up until she's got them all successfully married off and provided for. And her dead husband's ghost helps her a little bit, but it's just wacky. I really enjoyed it. And the last book in this box is a Dorothy Whipple novel from Persephone Books. They knew Mr. Knight. So I haven't read a Dorothy Whipple. I'm going to start with The Priory, which Ange of Beyond the Pages and I will be buddy reading in the next few months. And then if I like it, which I think I probably will, I've got this one. I picked this up at a used bookstore in Tokyo. And as I say every time, I don't think that Persephone Books design aesthetic is all that impressive. I think this is really boring compared to the end papers, which are gorgeous. But they do publish some good books. All right, so that was fun. Thanks for watching.